Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Bridget. I'm a nurse practitioner and a nurse educator. In today's video, I will be going over ventricular tachycardia. I will be making this available on Etsy as a downloadable PowerPoint. The link is in the description below. So what is VTAC? So if three or more PVCs occur, premature ventricular contractions, then that is now ventricular tachycardia. This is normal sinus rhythm with an isolated premature ventricular contraction, and you can see it here. So instead of the sinoatrial node firing, the ventricles start firing from an ectopic foci or foci, or it is a potentially life-threatening dysrhythmia because of decreased cardiac output and the possibility of turning into ventricular fibrillation, with, which is lethal. So this is a little bit more about what I was talking about earlier, and this is color-coded. So this is the sinoatrial node, and it's responsible here for atrial depolarization. That's this hump or wave that you see here is the SA node firing. From the SA node, it goes to the AV node, which is the atrial ventricular node. And then when it goes to the, look at this large area. This is the left bundle branch, this is the right bundle branch and the Purkinje fiber. So because this is such a large area, the wave is larger. This is ventricular depolarization. So that's the QRS complex. And then the T wave is ventricular repolarization. So repolarization, re means to do again. It's in a polar is to is, is carrying a charge. So it's charging back up. So anyways, so in ventricular tachycardia, there's an ectopic foci or foci. And instead of the impulse originating from the SA node, there's something happening over here. There's a little troublemaker that is firing when it shouldn't be firing. And that is causing, this is firing prematurely. So it's throwing off the electrical impulse of the heart. So there's different types of ventricular tachycardia. There's monomorphic, mono equals one. Same, it's the same shape, size, and direction. And as you can see, this, there's only one troublemaker in the heart here in regards to like one troublemaker that's firing the impulse. And because there's just one troublemaker, all of the imp, all of the waves look the same. The other thing that I wanted to say is that um, VTAC to me looks like the letter V. Um, it looks like the letter V or it looks like a mountain. That's how you remember that that's what the rhythm looks like. It has a wide QRS complex, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So as you can see here, there's a wide QRS complex. It can look like a mountain or also like the letter V for ventricular tachycardia. The QRS complex looks the same because it's origina originating from the same area. There's different types of ventricular tachycardia. There's polymorphic, and poly means many. If you know your prefixes, that will help you out tremendously. So it there, now instead of having one troublemaker, one area in the heart where the heart is firing, there's several areas or several troublemakers that are trying to take control and they're firing here. No, I want to fire. No, I want to fire. So the QRS complex changes back and forth from one shape, size, direction to another over a series of beats. And you can tell that this is firing from the same area here, right? And then all of a sudden, these here start to look different from like here these here, and then it goes back to the other troublemaker, the other area that was firing uh, atypically, or the other ectopic foci or foci. So this is a French word. Um, so forgive me if you're French and you are watching this because my French pronunciation is not fantastic, but bonjour mon ami if you're watching this. So torse, torsade de pont, <laughs> de pont is my uh, tr French way of trying to say it, torsade de pont. Um, it's French for twisting of the points. And as you can see here, if this is an X axis, the points kind of twist around this X axis. X axis, so say that five times. Amplitude, on a tor the way to tell if it's a torsade de pont is the fact that the amplitude of the QRS complexes are small, then they get tall, then they get small, then they get tall, small, tall, right? So it's polymorphic. It's polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, right? Because um, it has the QRS complexes have different shapes and it has a prolonged QT interval of the underlying rhythm. So here's the QT interval. This is prolonged. Um, this is another example of ventricular tachycardia, torsade de pont. And again, you see here the amplitude change 
it's uh, smaller and then it goes larger amplitude, small, large. But as you can see, the QRS complex is still wide. There's no P wave that is discernible here. Causes of ventricular tachycardia, myocardial, myocardial infarction, coronary artery disease, severe electrolyte imbalances, cardiomyopathy, long QT syndrome. This is genetic. And then if you take medications that can prolong the QT interval, then you are at risk. Because I'm a psych nurse, the one I can think of off my head is um, geodon or zeprazidone for prolonging QT syndrome. Uh, drug toxicity and central nervous system disorders. So of course, if someone has ventricular tachycardia because of an electrolyte imbalance, the, you need to correct. So correct, if possible, correct the cause of ventricular tachycardia. What does the ECG look like? The ventricular rate is 150 to 200 beats per minute. The rhythm can be regular or irregular. The P wave is usually not visible because it's buried in the QRS complex. The PR interval is not measurable. The QRS complex is bizarre and wide, greater than 0.12 second duration. Clinical significance. VTAC can be stable if it has a pulse and unstable pulseless. Sustained VTAC decreases cardiac output. Think about it. So the left ventricle is responsible for shooting out blood to the rest of the body, right? And if the ventricles don't have time to fill because the it's pumping so fast, the heart is pumping out basically like teaspoons and your body, your organs need to be perfused by blood. So if your blood is only being, if your body's only being perfused by a teaspoon of blood at a, um, at a time, you're definitely going to get some adverse events like hypotension. You could potentially get a, a pulmonary edema, decrease cerebral blood flow, right? So you could lose consciousness, cardiopulmonary arrest. And this must be treated because it may develop into ventricular fibrillation and can cause cardiac arrest. So, Treatment, VTAC with pulse. You want to treat underlying cause electrolyte imbalance. Now, um, the textbook goes a little bit more in depth in, depth in regards to how to treat this, but for this, I followed ACLS guidelines. You want to administer 150 milligrams of amiodarone, which is an antidysrhythmic, over 10 minutes. If unstable, perform synchronized cardioversion, and you refer to your specific device's recommended energy level to maximize first shock success. So VTAC without a pulse, it's life-threatening, right? It seems like common sense. You treat like ventricular fibrillation, CPR, and defibrillation, right? Um, this is BLS, ACLS. So the rhyme that I always have you remember, the rhyme that I've said that you, how you remember which rhythms are shockable is defib, for, so defibrillate, right? Defib for V, fib, and pulseless V, tac. Don't defib a systole, you won't get them back. Defib for V, fib, and pulseless V, tac. Don't defib a systole, you won't get them back. Okay, so inevitably people will leave comments on my videos. You do, I have seen people shock a systole in the hospital. And the reason why sometimes they shock a systole in the hospital is because their rationale is maybe this is very fine ventricular fibrillation, so let's just shock them and see what happens, right? But the way that a shock works, think about a computer, right? Your computer needs to have a charge in order to turn on, right? If you turn a computer off and back on and it's completely dead, the battery is completely dead, you can't turn it back on, right? What you need to have some kind of rhythm in order, because what the shock is doing is it's resetting the electrical rhythm of the heart. It's resetting it. So if there's no rhythm there, then shocking it is not going to do anything, right? So that's why you don't shock. If you're taking ACLS, you don't shock asystole. That is the wrong answer. I like to address that. You also don't shock pulseless electrical activity, but that's a conversation for another day. And according to ACLS guidelines, the drug therapy for VTAC without a pulse is epinephrine. So we want to give uh, vasopressors and then antidysrhythmics. That might be on a test like uh, on a nursing test, but in real life, we're doing epinephrine, one milligram every three to five minutes, amiodarone, first dose, 300 milligrams, second dose, 150 with a max of 450 or lidocaine first dose and then you can read this on your own there are two shockable rhythms VTAC pulseless and ventricular fibrillation and once again here 
these are uh, the drug therapy for shockable rhythms. You can purchase this PowerPoint on Etsy. Link is in the description below. Nursing with Prof B is my Etsy store name. I believe I'll be selling this on um, Etsy for like $2.99. I also have my ACLS and BLS on sale at Etsy. And uh, your support helps me out tremendously. I have Sjogren's and autoimmune condition, so I have a lot of medical bills. And you can also support me on uh, Patreon. Make sure that you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe. It makes the YouTube algorithm happy and it helps other students that are struggling be able to find this video. Until next time, bye.